Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Thinking Big podcast. Today, we're going to be talking with Tuche Osdiger about her heart-centric tech. Uh, and today's going to be a great show because I actually love it when people bring their passion into their careers, you know, when, when they see something uh, and they use their imagination in a way to help others and, and help grow themselves. Uh, Tuche is an experienced software engineer. She's worked in the banking. Uh, she's worked in the defense industries. And she is now known for shifting the mindsets of other software engineers and helping them gain a new perspective in, in their career and in technology. And Tuche holds uh, degrees in computer science from all over the damn world. She's She's got degrees from Sweden. She's got degrees from uh, Ireland and her home country of Turkey. And, and I can tell you this, that I've been in technology for over 30 years. And I can tell you we're typically a bunch of pretty dry people. I think we're actually below accounting. Uh, but I believe that no matter what field you're in, personal development is the key to having a great career and growing. And Tuche noticed through her own development and her own mentoring, the need to mentor other technology people. Uh, so she started her heart-centric tech mentoring. Uh, so today, we're going to be thinking big into our mindset. Welcome to the Thinking Big Podcast with Sean Osborne, the show helping you think bigger into your life and potential. Sean believes by equipping you with the tools, strategies, and philosophies required to be successful in all aspects of your life, you can achieve anything you believe in. Empowering our own growth makes a deeply positive and lasting impact on our lives, community, and our world. Now, here's Sean. Tuche, welcome to the show today. I know you're going to add so much value to the to the audience. Tell us a little bit about you know where you came from and and kind of how you got where you are because it's 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 a great story. It's an incredible story. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I was born in Istanbul, uh, and when I graduated from high school, I moved to Ankara, the capital, and I studied there for five years, and. During the, those five years, I went to Ireland when I was 22 as an exchange student, and I studied there for one period. And then I came back to Turkey, and I studied one more year and be graduated from the bachelor. I got my bachelor degree. Mm -hmm. And then in 2010, uh, I moved to Sweden. So I have been living here almost 10 years. Oh, nice. Well, I, I, uh, Turkey is one of my favorite places to go to. Okay. Did you visit Istanbul or another? Oh, I've, I've been all over. I've been all over. Uh, we've been, I've been to Istanbul, Izmir, Bodrum, uh, the Cappadocia region, uh, all over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely love, love Turkey. It's, uh, yeah, we're supposed to, we have a boat that, uh, we, we rented for end of August and September. And I'm not yeah. sure. We're, I'm not sure we're going to be able to get there now. So we're kind of hoping we can still we can still get there. But fun to go there. Yeah. Fun to go back. Do you go back often? Yeah, I used to go there in summer because you know I live in Scandinavia and the summer is not very prom promising here. Um, so and I of course I miss uh, the culture, the food. Uh, we are a bit different. Uh, compared to uh, yeah. Scandinavian, because I mean I don't know, but I don't know actually why. But I really fell in love with Irish people, and I really wanted to stay in Ireland, but I couldn't uh, because they are very different. They are very down to earth people, and they are very natural. I don't know. I feel really close to the to Irish people, but Swedes are different. I should say, even though I live here for ten years. Right. Uh, I really feel that Swedish people, Scandinavian people, they are different. But Irish people, I really felt them close to my uh, own origin. Really? Yeah, be, yeah, they are very nice. And they, I mean, when I was um, like walking in the street, just people just come by and talk. And then when I said that I come, I come from Turkey, and they said that uh, we visit Turkey, we were in Kushadasu and like the Bodrum. And they just came to you and talked to you without any reason. I didn't know those people. And I felt that these people are very warm, even though Ireland is also a very cold country. Like, uh, because, you know, the weather is also have a very big, very big in, in influence on yeah. people's uh, behavior or the, the energy. For example, if you have a warm uh, weather, then you become a bit more warm person. Yeah. 
That's interesting just, on that, yeah. No. Yeah, but Irish people, I, that's what I experienced. I just lived there four months or five months, so I don't know. And I live in Athlone. It's two hours away from Dublin. Maybe people there are a bit uh, different or I don't know, but I really love them and they are uh, they are very nice people. Um, so what got you into uh, into technology? Yeah, that is a question that I got uh, someone else as well. They just asked me why I study IT because now IT or, or technology is very popular these days when you consider the mobile phones yeah. and uh, the digitalization and so on. But the thing is that I chose IT in 2005, which is like uh, uh, 15 years ago, and it was not popular at all to study with the data and technology and there is there is absolutely no one in my whole family who has studied IT or and data or they have no clue so when i graduated from the high school in turkey we uh, we used to take an university entrance exam because we don't have enough places for all students and there are lots of young people. So we need to take an exam, which means that the ones that have a good grades, they can study. The others need to try again. Uh, so I, I I took that exam and I, I have some got some grades and I just need to decide what I'm going to study. And my uncle, my brother, my mother's brother, he studied economy. And I just thought that maybe I should also economy. And my parents, they are high school graduates, so they didn't study in university. But I was a bit, I have some doubts because I don't really think that economy is my thing. I was really good at mathematics, so I know that I will choose some field where I can use my mathematical um, competence or knowledge, but I didn't know exactly what it should be. I don't want to be a teacher uh, I don't really feel very interesting with the economy or business management. And I, w I was just thinking all the time what I need to, because I need to make a decision. And then one, and I was just thinking, and I'm just, and I found the university, uh, Bill Kent University in Ankara. It's one of the best universities in Turkey, and it has a very good relation with uh, European students and United States. And I really want to study there. I really moved to Ankara. It was just a feeling there is no one in Ankara we, or we don't have any connection. Uh, and I, but I didn't decide the, the, the field. And then one, one day I just woke up. And uh, after I woke up, I remember the, the division that I'm going to uh, study. And it's Computer Technology Information System. So it's a very long name. But I remember that when I woke up, I remember that. And then I just Google it. And then I found that this is like a, like a new uh, division that was opened like a few years ago in the university that I, will, I want to study in Ankara. And I just told my mother that I found it. And she just asked me, how did you find it? I just saw it in my dream. And she said, what? And then we say, I said, just computer technology and information system. And they just look at my face. What is that? <laughs> and then I, I just, then I, this is the first time I uh, can come to, or come to, uh, or be familiarized with the data. And I just look at their curriculum, what they are going to teach. Uh, and what is data, what is algorithm or the programming language and lots of other uh, things. And then I discuss with my, uh, some, some people who studied in the university with my family. And they, they think that, I mean, it's, I think it's like technology. This, it was not that popular at the, mo at the moment because I, I remember that I have a very old mobile phone like Nokia maybe at that time. But they and we, I also think that this could be something big in the future and it's worth to take this chance and study there. And then I just chose this field. It was my, you know, you make some uh, choices right. according to your grades. And this was my first choice and I got that. And then I studied there. So the, the, the thing is why I, dis, why I explain this because IT was my destiny. Yeah. I was meant to study in IT. Yeah. So that's, that is what I I try to explain. I mean, I saw where I will study in my dream. And there was no persons in my 
family who studied. I have my I cousin. I have cousins who are who are doctors, like or um, farm or who has pharmacy or dentists or economists or market marketing. But there is no one in my family or lawyer, but no one who studied specifically this uh, field 15 years ago or even and that IT didn't exist before them that much. Right. Uh, so I, I really felt like when I just think, because I got this question from someone else as well, when I just f- f- try to feel why I'm in this field, I just remember that that I got this this field name in my dream and I just remember it and when I type it in the Google I saw it that that was the uh, that was the field that I'm I meant to study and then I just followed the my dream I knew I knew that uh, I will be successful uh, and uh, because the way I I uh, started is that I just asked in the first day what we are going to learn and they said Matt this is the programming language and I said what is that so this is how I because I have I had no programming competence or uh, experience before right now you can even start to learn programming languages by yourself you don't have to study but at the time that I didn't have any background, I didn't know anything, I just chose because I thought that I can use mathematical, my mathematical mathematical competence or knowledge because we are going to calculate what this is what you are doing when you write programs. And uh, I thought that it will be a, one of the promising uh, fields in the future to, uh, to study. So it was just a guess, and it became it's just uh, become true. Now it's very popular. Everyone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've uh, yeah, I've managed IT groups for God thirty years, but most people don't. Uh, they don't like you. You had the feeling you saw it in your dream. Most people don't listen to their selves. They don't listen to you know these uh, these dreams they have or these you know. To me, it's the universe talking to you, saying, "Hey, you know," uh, but most people don't don't listen to it. They don't uh, they don't pay attention to it. Yeah, but this this voice is not that much uh, loud if you don't uh, give your attention. Yeah. Because as I told you, I ask, I ask a lot. What field? It, even though I was not spiritual that much at that uh, age. Right. But I was just asking all the time. No, it's not economy. It's something that what can be what can be the other thing. I don't want to be a doctor. I don't want to be a lawyer. It's something else. I know it was not this. And then I got the answer. Because that because I mean, universe is available for everyone. But uh, if you are aligned with the, with the source energy, or if you are if you're expecting to hear something, then you will hear it. I don't mean that universe doesn't say, of course, whatever you want, whatever you ask is already given. But the question is, are you listening or are you ready to allow or receive it? Yeah. At that time, I was expecting something and I receive it and I I, uh, buy, I bought it, like I follow it. Yeah, sometimes you sometimes you need it. You know, it's a feather. Sometimes it's a two by four. A lot of times I need the, the the two by four to to pay attention to, <laughs> to, to some of that. Yeah. So what got you into kind of, you know, so you, so you did, you know, this, you know, you went into the university and you, you know, started doing it stuff and started programming yeah. and, and doing all the stuff. Yeah. What, what, what gave you the passion? What drove you to start mentoring people, start uh, teaching people and especially like the mindset and, and obviously the, the tech side as well, but what drove you to, to do that? Yeah, because I I I learned from my parents that I will be happy if I will study in the good universities, if I will be happy if I will have a good job, a good salary, and so on. That's that was my passion. That's why I was always asking questions: which university, where I should move, is Sweden as a good country or not? And then I just follow up because I had I have an expectation that I will be happy at the end. 
And the thing is that when I, I got really good jobs here in Sweden, I work with very Swedish corporate uh, companies and uh, good, very good positions. I, for example, I deliver my master thesis in a, a street fight, a jet fighter uh, at Saab. So it, this, that's how I started this journey. Uh, I remember that I uh, entered the, the defense Swedish defense with my uh, foreign passport and this is very weird because you should be the citizen to right. be able to enter that uh, very secret area and I speak English and I have a uh, foreign passport and I'm in Swedish defense and everybody said why where do you come from why are you here <laughs> so it, this is how I started because I was the only person who spoke English at that time, you know, because they, I mean, Swedes, they are very good at speaking English, but they don't want to prefer speaking English in defense. Right. Because it's very uh, secret. Um, but that then I, I felt like uh, I, I didn't, I mean, I, I became happy, but I was not that fulfilled at my job. Uh, because the outer circumstances that I was thinking or that's what I learned from my family didn't make me happy. It just gave me happiness for a period of time. But then I didn't I didn't feel very fulfilled and I have the feeling that I don't use my full potential. I didn't mean that I didn't like what I'm doing. I still do, do the programming and I, I love it. But I just feel like this is not the only thing I am meant to be here. And this is just a feeling. I don't have any uh, good explanation. And then I was just looking for something. I mean, I, I was looking for something without knowing what that is. Because coaching, life coach, this is not something I, I was aware of or my, from my friends, colleagues or my family. And I just met a woman in 2018 in Stockholm, and she was she was a transformational coach uh, from Zurich. And then when I see her on the stage, I got a very good uh, Im impression that she knows what she is talking. And the the thing that she said on the stage that the people that you see on this on the screen on the TV, the successful people. Do you think that they did all the success by themselves? Everyone has a coach behind or a mentor. Absolutely. And that was the sentence that I was looking for because I I came to a point in my life where I feel like I did everything by myself up to now. And that's what I knew. And I don't know what, what is my next step. I need to have someone to tell me because... As I said, I moved here alone and I did everything by myself, about my career, the, the job uh, interviews, and I study here, and there are lots of things happening in my private life. But I, I came to a point that I don't know what I should do. I, need, I, I use my own knowledge. I came to a conclusion. I don't, need, I don't have any new or any more knowledge that can take me to my next step. And yeah. that was my question. And I was just looking for someone and I, I, I found this woman and what she said, it really resonates with me. And I felt like, yes, that was what I was looking for. I need someone who is, who is, um, has much more experience than me and who can guide me so that I can take my next step because I get, I feel like I stuck here. I don't know what else or how can I use my other competence and what can I do more? Right. And then I cont I start with this woman, uh, and then I have one-to-one -one coaching calls. I uh, went to Zurich a couple of times, four or five times, to have this physical coaching. And then, I mean, I did a very great work. My coaches, are actually, she's the owner of the company, and there are other coaches working with her. So the, the coach that I have one-to-one, -one, she was an American woman. Uh, so she was my personal coach, uh, and she told me that uh, with the with the calls that I have, she said that uh, you will be the future of of coach in in tech, and this is something that we really need because the technology is is developing every every day or every year with lots of new things. And the per and and it's she also thinks and I agree with that. It's also important that I am a woman because we are minority in technology, 
and every time the women who are studying who are working in technology they just quit and choose something else because they don't really thrive in technologies because very man dominated right uh, so that's why i really think and this is the conversation that i had with her that we really think that it's needed that a, a woman who has done a career in tech technology will take this uh, uh, step uh, and be uh, and, or, or learn spirituality and just merge these two distinct uh, fields like the technology where you use a, a lot of mental work or requires a lot of mental capacity right. with the spirituality where you connect with your soul. Uh, so when when because she said that this is a mission to combine these two and bridge the gap between uh, the technology and and the humanity because the in spirituality you feel more human you accept the things that you have done you forgive yourself but in technology it, it's like more more about like robot that you program right. you just expect things to work in this in the way that you want. But it's not working in that fashion in, in the humanity. You can make mistakes and this is the way you learn things and so on. So these two, if these two combine together, then uh, th this is the dream or this is what we are, uh, we have challenges working in technology. So that was my mission to bridge the gap between the technology and humanity. Um, so I, I just thought that I will... Uh, and I'm still, and this is a lifelong journey. I'm still being coached and mentored. So I'm, uh, I'm always with her until she or I die. <laughs> um, but um, I want to share the knowledge because this is, I mean, this is one of the things that I really like doing it because I really don't want to keep all the knowledge to myself. So right. this is the first reason why I started this uh, business idea to mentor uh, especially women who are studying in, in who are studying or working or has an interest in uh, making a career in technology uh, to assist them to mentor them because technology is what I have been working on and I'm still doing it uh, so I can uh, mentor them but in the long future in the future of course I will even uh, assist with uh, IT companies because they are also struggling to keep uh, female developers and we are not too many uh, um, and it's hard for companies to keep them. Right. Uh, uh, there are some challenges that female developers face with as well to work with very old men. Uh, so young girls, they don't choose that field or they choose some other roles in technology way where they, the, it doesn't require any technical skill. Right. Yeah. That. Yeah. That. That's. That. That's what I. I thought before I started this um, mentoring program, and this program consists of three modules uh, because I really think that what I mean the mindset is the foundation. You should have this, and when you when you feel that you feel good, then we can start to. Uh, build uh, blocks uh, like not blocks maybe but just building the house right. because if you don't have a good foundation if you don't feel good about yourself if you have self-doubts or if you don't like yourself as a person then we shouldn't start with the career because it doesn't make any sense you will fail in any way so we need to fa make a foundation that you accept yourself as you are you are enough you have a good feeling about yourself you are positive you are connected uh, and you meditate, you take it easy. And when we when we feel that we make some progress in that area, then we will talk about your genius, your natural talent, because everyone on this planet, we're born with a talent or we can have more talents as well. The what We are trying to find the one that you feel the least resistance, because when you feel the least resistance, you will serve the humanity in a high level and then you feel the joy. And then we will align this with the technology. So what is your genius? How you can serve the people with your mission? And then we will create a vision for you just short and long, long term. And then we will make the alignment for the technology because technology is our field. And then we will talk about what kind of career opportunities is available for you. 
And then, of course, the money. The money is also the result because if you're happy, you have a good job. If you don't make enough money, then it, there will be some. Um, uh, the, uh, you will not feel fulfilled because that is my slogan that I want you to create a fulfilled and lucrative career career opportunities. Uh, so it should be, uh, of course, uh, fulfilled. You really feel that you feel you use your full potential on the job that you are doing. You feel least resistance and then you make a good life uh, living with with the with the thing that you share with the with the, um, humanity. So mindset is the first thing and then career and finance the money mindset and what do you think about money how do you attract money and um, what kind of uh, limiting beliefs you have inherited from your parents that is also because money is also energy so these are the three modules that we will talk about and everything will be tailored for your uh, needs and this is a three months program where we will focus on uh, those three aspects of uh, having a good uh, lucrative and fulfilling uh, career opportunities in technology. So that was the idea that I created with my coach. And that, and that is what I'm, yeah, and that, yeah. that is such a needed thing in the technology industry. I mean, it, it truly is. What's the biggest obstacle you see for people that are technology people in coming around to the to the mindset you know again because you're very analytical or technology people are normally very analytical what's the biggest you know roadblock or obstacle you see in people in technology they as i i mean i am also one of them i don't exclude myself because i'm still working and i of course i improve myself but i feel that uh, I am also one of them. And the thing is that the wor- the more you work with the techniques and technology, the, m- the more you feel like you are not human anymore because you are thinking, like you said, like one zeros, if it is working or not, or what is, and you don't, you don't, you forget that the persons you serve is also human. Because when you work with computer, you feel like I am serving for the computer. That is what I I experience. And then I just said that, yeah, I'm working with computer, but I'm serving for the human still. So you you lose that uh, that feeling. You forgot the humanity part. That is is very essential that we we add the human part in the technology. And when you work with the techniques, with the computer, with the code all the time, you don't have that much a good connection with your colleagues or the people around you or you, you just uh, you lose yourself because you are always on the mind. You are totally disconnected. I was disconnected before I met this woman because for me it's also it's one or two, one or zero. Right. And this is not life is because the job is just a tool. It's not your whole life. Right. And that that circumstances like we are living in this life with, with this virus, this is also a good reminder that you can lose that job that you spend your whole life and you can just sit at home without job. So what is the what is the reality in life? Is it a job? No, it's not. And you take people take very seriously. Oh, it's my job. Yeah, it's good that you are passionate about. So that this is the the difference. Because if you feel passionate about your job, and that's really great, but you shouldn't take the job that serious that seriously. That this is just one part in your life, but this is not the whole thing. Because for 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 example, my coach she always said that job is something that you do to to get to to feel joy to do something, to, to serve people. But it's not something that you do it, you take it very seriously and you're just disconnected from the world and just sitting in the computer and just talking with the, with the code or the computer. Absolutely. Yeah. So how you, how you can shift your, um, um, the, the, the way you, you, you consider your job or the, this technology is something like something that it's, whenever, for example, now I, before I, because I started this program, I then started to share my knowledge. For example, we have that, that, that uh, trainees, 
and that they graduated from university and they started our company then i i did the lecture for them because i want to share with my, my knowledge they studied in the university and they have no clue about the feeling uh, to work as a developer and then i i, I make them uh, two lectures technical lecture and also the just talk about the way we work and i just talk with them because that is also my my passion to to share my knowledge and just feel that when people you uh, use my knowledge they they be, they improve themselves as a person and as a developer so i did some i did humanity in in the work i am doing it i don't know if people notice it in that way but i did it and then i talk in the conferences about i the spirituality in technology of course, people just confused a little bit because, you know, in technology, the spirituality is, <laughs> is completely forgotten. That's right. It's completely ignored. Yeah. When I, even when I use the heart with the technology, people just look at me like heart and technology. Okay, it's interesting. <laughs> and that's why my logo is, is heart. And in the in the heart, it's it's the code, like right. the brackets. So that could that this could be combined, but yeah, it's challenging. I I totally agree, but the, I took this challenge, and I I don't know how it will would be, but I still think that this is this is needed, uh, and especially for women because I have some female uh, colleagues, and uh, they struggle working with a very old man. Uh, they think that they are not seen, they are not heard, they are not taken seriously because they are. They think that oh, I'm a girl. How could I be good at technology? Right. And they have self doubts. And this is something that I want to help with them. That you shouldn't take very seriously what other people uh, think, or you shouldn't project them into your being, because you are good enough. And technology is not only uh, available for men. You can do even better, uh, but of course I understand because I was 25 years old when I started to work as a developer, uh, and my colleagues they were all over 50 years old. Right. Um, now, so I, I totally understand them. I totally resonate them, and I really want to uh, like increase their self confidence, and I just make them feel that they can as long as they want. They shouldn't stop doing it just because other people or other colleagues, they don't believe them. So, right. yeah. So what the, if you look back early in your career, if you had had this program that you're teaching back when you were, you know, in, the, in your 20s and you were getting started in your, in your tech career, how yeah. do you, how different do you think your f fulfillment or your career would have gone? I mean, I feel more self-fulfillment now because I have uh, more self-confidence. I know why I am. I was born, and I know my genius, my mission, uh, and uh, my self-confidence is rising. And of course, I listen people, uh, and I take lead role as well because this uh, mentorship that I was uh, going through it's a leadership uh, program as well because when you take the responsibility of yourself you become the leader because this is self mastery education that I'm going through uh, of course I listen people I respect everyone's uh, opinion and uh, feedback but of course I uh, just continue as I as I want to uh, and I ask right questions. I expect the results. I trust the universe. I was very doubtful about the life and in general before that. But now I trust. I totally trust whatever I wish it will become true as long as I keep the good uh, positive vibes. Right. Um, so I, of course, I'm a human and sometimes I don't feel very good and that's very normal, but I don't know, I know the way go back to the source and just graduate, I mean, appreciate things that happening in my life. And now I'm running two projects at my work place. Uh, one project where I uh, contribute to the team delivery and also the other project where I learn new technology uh, because 
I am young and I have over eight, nine years experience. But as I said, technology is evolving. There are new technologies, new new programming languages appearing all the time. Oh, I yeah. just start to keep up, keep updated. Like I need to update myself as well because we have also system. Uh, so that's why I I, I um, continue with two tracks where I deliver, I contribute to delivery and learn new technology and yeah and that is that is what i manifested because it's not that possible to have those things in corporate but my managers even the head they listen to me because i i have a good communication skills i and i understand people i respect people and i am very clear about what i want because i told him that if you want to keep me here i want to have time to spend on learning new technology right because I'm a developer, I want to be attractive in the market, and I can't do it if I just stuck with the old technology. Of course, I work, still work on that, because we have systems, but you need to understand me that you need to give me time to focus on the things that I would like. And he said yes. And this is this is not very normal in the corporate That's area. That's not, no. You know, because you have a, yeah, it's because when you just increase or just when you get to a new level, when you reach another energy level, then things can become happening very easily. Because when you are connected to those good or positive vibes, when you reach another energy level, when you talk with people, they just accept it, they just agree, or you just meet people that can be resonate that can resonate you or maybe in the same level like you are because we have the, we have the same system you are an american i am turkish living in sweden we have the same system but we are in different energy levels right so this this when this men- mentorship program you will just take the take your next step and be the best version of yourself and take the next energy level uh, so I, I shift that because I was complaining about before. I was just blaming people. Uh, but now I take the responsibility. Whatever I face or whatever I experience in life, I created it. If I want to change it, then I just change my thoughts. And so that, that, is, that is such a critical view that most don't, they don't see that we are truly 100% responsible for everything we have, everything we see. We are responsible. And the second we take responsibility, things will start to change. Yeah, because I, I, I took it. It takes a lot of courage, but that is what I learned. Whatever you experience, good or bad, you create it on, with your own thoughts. So if you want to change your life, you need to change your energy level and change your change the way you are thinking. Absolutely. That that thing will change. That's that's what what I change because I really think that I don't want to uh, work in this fashion. I want to work the new technology, and then I just start to think about it, and then things happen. My manager has changed. Another guy came into the place, and then when I talk him, he said he understood me, and then now I start to a new project where I have time uh, to focus on the new things. And there are lots of other things that I manifested as well. So it, it's a go- it's ongoing process actually. Uh, so just take the responsibility and I understand that this is not very easy all the time but when you make this as a habit when you trust uh, when you focus on the positive uh, vibes and when you go back to your source when you are when you feel that you are tapped into the negative or you you became disconnected then things will change around you yeah because absolutely. you change yeah absolutely now, what do you see? I think technology is about to make a, partly because of the pandemic that's going on, but I think technology is about to make a huge shift on its impact for, really, the impact for humanity. I think there's going to be so many ingenious things, so many things that, that come out of come out of this. What, what predictions do you have for how technology is going to change how we, how we live? I mean, I, I really think that there will be a lot of robots in the future that we don't even need to write uh, write the code. 
So I think that robots will even replace developers. And even, of course, the robots will replace the people in the future. And then in the long run, even they will even re we will also replaced. That is what I, I am thinking. And the augmented reality and the robots, they are all, all already in place. And I just saw, watched some news from, I think it was Japan or maybe China, I don't know, that they start to use robots instead of people. Um, so this is what is going to happen. And then it will be both sad and happy, maybe, that uh, we will we will maybe lose our jobs, but maybe we make money from other things. Maybe other fields will appear and then right. maybe we will work less. We don't need to work eight hours a day. And it really depends on what kind of uh, fields will be replaced. But that is what I'm thinking that because we are trying to automate everything as much as we can, even in the technology, we don't right. want to test things uh, manually. We want to automate it. So this is where we will be in the future that lots of things will be automated and people will be not needed maybe. Right. Or we just be needed to maintain those robots or the systems that automate the job. Um, so that is, that is what I think that will happen. Uh, and the technology will be in need more and more as we are uh, doing everything digitally. And digitalization is one of the hot topics for the companies, for the corporate companies, because people, they don't want to visit the, the offices, likely the users. They want to fix everything just uh, with their mobile phone. So everything will be on mobiles and on the um, iPads or yeah, or on computers. So they people can, uh, you know, maybe you have experienced that sometimes when you contact to a bank, you don't even talk with the customer service. You right. talk to the robot or chat bot. So that is what technology is developing, that we are using artificial intelligence to be able to answer your questions and to guide you to find an answer. So this is where we are going. Like uh, everything will will be automated. Yeah, uh, like it or not, it's it's coming. So yeah, know, for me, we got to prepare ourselves both from a you know from a skill set to uh, to a mindset on the changes that uh, that are going to be coming. It's, it, there's no yeah. doubt it's it's coming. But it, it is. I think it, it's a. I don't see it as a negative because I mean, of course there will be people who will lose job, but then I feel like there will be new jobs. Right. Uh, so yeah, because absolutely. you know, universe is always expanding. So when when we think new things, when we are when we have other desires, then it's expanding because we are also a part of the universe. So right. we are connected. So when we have uh, found something that we will not be needed, then it's, I, I just see it as a positive, then there will be different things that we will do, or maybe we will work less. Right. We don't need to work like from nine to five, maybe. But uh, of course, in the, on the other aspect, there are people like my, because we discuss these things with my colleagues and they become a little bit upset that they will not do this job anymore. <laughs> but you don't know what will be coming. Right. Yeah, there's going to be other, other just as important things for us to us to do. It's just we just got to change our, change yeah, change what we do. Yeah, exactly. So, so how do so on your on your program? How do people how do how do people find you? I, I know you have your heartcentrictech.com. Is is yeah. that the best place for people to to find your your program? Yeah, that is my website, uh, and I have also Instagram account. And that I uh, usually post, um, and I have also page on on Facebook, and the, those are all connected. Like uh, if you want to book a free session with me uh, on my website that you would like to discuss or, or you are curious about what this is about, then it will redirect uh, you to my Facebook page so that you can book a time with me. And my Instagram account is connected with uh, with um, my LinkedIn page and my Facebook page and with other social social channels. Uh, so and I use this name all over the place. So if you just um, type in heart centric tech, uh, then it will probably me. 
Um, yeah. So I I am very I, I try to be social as much as I can on on the social media on Instagram and share some um, some um, like insights about the spirituality the way we think how we can practice and I share some techniques and tools and I also share some technological aspects like the technology that I'm using or the technology that I'm thinking that it's very uh, interesting to learn. I share some tools that you can try by yourself. So it's very mixed of spirituality and technology. Uh, and that is what I'm uh, doing with this mentoring program. So I just uh, try to um, have uh, like serve both like uh, people who are both interested in spirituality and also with the technology. Uh, so that is what I'm trying to share and uh, create an audience that has both interests. And of course, it doesn't mean that you should have a both interests. Right. Uh, you have a spirituality interest. Maybe technology can be something new for you to learn. Or maybe you are a technology person. Maybe spirituality is something new. Then you can learn new things. I think we should be open-minded uh, uh, because I, I, as a person, very open-minded, and I uh, really want to learn new things all the time. Um, so you don't feel like, oh, I should be a person who should have a technology background and shouldn't have. No, you don't have to. This is just a suggestion that is provided to you. Uh, so if you, even if you don't have any technology background, you are still welcome to follow and to read and. Um, mm -hmm to be engaged um, um, yeah the technology is the field because that is what I'm familiar with right uh, that is what I study and what I work this doesn't mean that I exclude everyone who doesn't have an interest right and I uh, think this uh, is I'm telling you being in, in technology for the past you know 30 plus years this is such a needed thing for me not only for women but for, for men I mean it's I didn't see the the mindset side of it until God, 20 years into my career. And so I just, I personally know that this, what you're doing is extremely important for, you know, for the technology side, but yeah, any, any, I think any person that has a, you know, kind of an analytical type job, you know, accounting, uh, yeah. various things that are just numbers, computers, you know, it's not, uh, can really benefit from this. I mean, it's, it is such a huge thing. And that to me, my biggest roadblock was not knowing that side of things. I only knew the analytical side. I only knew the, you know, the ones and the zeros, the, you know, I was completely binary. I did, I did not understand the whole, you know, spiritual side, the mindset side, the universe side. So again, I think this is an absolute, uh, perfect combination of, of, two really distinct different uh, different things that uh, that is really really needed yeah but that is very normal because that is what you study in the university right and this is what i knew as well i just think that uh, the mind it has the control over everything and we should uh, find a solution by ourselves but this is not uh, how it works uh, all the time and when you work with the technology, when you work with the co uh, code, or maybe you are accountant, you are working with numbers, you feel like I need to uh, find a solution. But of course, it is you who will find the solution, but you will find a better solution when you're connected, when you have the self-confidence that you are good enough to do this without making yourself stressed. Um, so that is, uh, this spirituality part is not told at uh, in the universities or in the schools right because we are very um thought like we should be very mind uh, we should use the mind and we should uh, obey the rules we should uh, act like the the way we should like according to cultural or religious and so on uh, so we became like a robot that we forget ourselves we are not connected we don't know what who we are in the core why we are here because those questions I have never asked myself before I start to uh, study with this uh, man mentoring program uh, I didn't understand even what is genius it took me a lot of time to understand because I didn't know that uh, 
uh, I have a specific genius just for myself. It's right. me. Yep. So it, it means that it's me. No one can take it from me. Uh, and uh, it's given me because I am supposed to share this with people to make their life easy because this is my genius. It feels really easy for me because it's my genius, but it's not that easy for other people because it's not their genius. Absolutely. When we, when we share our genius with other people, then life is much happy, much uh, better, and we feel happy because it's very easy to do. Because it's my genius, right? And it's the same for other people. And when we share it, then the the life is good. Uh, and I didn't know that uh, because for me, my genius is IT. I was just, I was just thinking what can, and then I I felt I find myself that I'm really attached with the job. And did, did people just ask me like, I mean, IT didn't exist 20 years ago. How could it be possible that IT is your genius? And I would just had a breakthrough. Yeah, that's true. What happened? What just? I just try to imagine what happens if there is no technology. Then how should I survive? So those things also a very good indication how we are very attached or we how we take very serious about the profession we have. It's just one part of your life, to, but it's not the whole thing. You are more than that, and that is what I felt. I like what I'm doing. I like delivering code and make people's life easy. But this is not the only thing I can do. Right. That's what you do. That's not who you are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But people just think that this is who I am because that is also because then when they ask me, genius, I, I am a technology person. I'm because I take it very seriously. Like, I really attach to it. And then I just diat, diat, disattach that this is just what I'm doing right. for to earn a living. Right. But I am I am the universe. I'm much bigger than this. This is just like a task that I'm doing. And yeah. more than that. And this takes time and courage to be able to understand this difference that the, because when you sit with the computer eight hours each day, you really feel that this is you and you can't yeah. do m anything more than that. You know, so what's, funny, is a, what's funny is you can ask, like I'll ask someone, you know, who are you? And their default is not who they are. Their default is what they do. Like if I ask yeah, who, yeah. who are you there? Well, I, I'm a programmer. I'm a, I'm a banker. It's like not, not what you do. You know, who are you? I'm going to ask you two questions. Yeah. It's going to be, and you got to answer these. You got to answer them. Donar, Irish stew, or Swedish meatballs? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like Swedish meatballs. And I, as far as I, I know, there was a history between Turkey or maybe Ottoman Empire and uh, Sweden that I thought that Swedes, they took the meatful, meatballs from uh, Ottoman Empire because we have also meatballs. It doesn't look the same, but there is a history behind it because, yeah, the Swedish king, he, he, he just want to... Uh, run away from the Russians and they, he just lay, lay with the Ottomans for 10 years and he learned a lot of Turkish culture and then he just take over to Scandinavia. But I really like Swedish meatballs and it's, of course, but is it really Swedish? I doubt, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> okay, and the other, then now the other question is, would you rather have rake, Irish whiskey or vodka? <laughs> yeah, I, I like Irish whiskey, but um, I like Russian or yeah, Swedish vodka is also absolute vodka is also Swedish. <laughs> yes. But if I need to choose one, I will choose Irish whiskey. Oh, really? <laughs> Over rake? Oh, I love no. rake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> Well, Tucci, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Uh, you've given so much valuable information to the Thinking Big community, and I know you've expanded my mindset, so thank you so much. And everyone, remember to check out the show notes uh, for all the links to Tucci, uh, or you can just go directly to her website at heartcentrictech.com and go uh, go see what she has to say and see what she's doing. It's, it's absolutely fantastic stuff. And as always, leaders are readers. 
and the show notes are packed with some free books for you to get. I've got a free copy of the Think and Grow Rich book that you can download. Uh, it's ready for you to use. Uh, in addition, uh, in August, I'm going to be doing a seven-day free Think and Grow Rich uh, challenge. Uh, seven days of immersion of Think and Grow Rich. It's a free, a free seven-day thing. Uh, make sure you go to my website, check it out. Uh, and enroll in it. Uh, I think you will absolutely love it. It's going to be a great seven days to get clarity on where you want to go. And also there's links to uh, Audible's free book. Uh, they sponsor the show and you're able to get a free book from Audible's. Just go to bit.ly slash thinking big audible and register for your free book. It's yours to keep uh, on Audible's. So until next week, always remember to think big.